we have three rules dictating how we find the horizontal asymptote. The first rule is that if the degrees of the numerator and denominator are equal, the equations, the equation of the horizontal asymptote will be the ratio of the leading coefficients of the numerator and the denominator. Yes, indeed, this is what we've got today, right now, and we'll do that. But also, the second rule is, well, what happens if the degree of the numerator, the top, is lower than the degree of the denominator, the bottom, then the line y equals zero is automatically the horizontal asymptote. You don't need to calculate anything. It does happen, if you remember my saying this last week, it does happen that the line y equals zero is the x-axis. And then finally, the third rule is that if the degree of the numerator is higher than the degree of the denominator, there will be no horizontal asymptote. Instead, oops, instead, there will be an oblique asymptote. Oblique. Ha. Well, it's not a ha. How dumb is that? It's not horizontal. And again, if you take calculus, you'll find out what that is. Or you could just go visit, if you're curious, go visit the um, uh, internet and say, what is an oblique asymptote? And they'll show you different kinds of oblique asymptotes, and then you'll know. But we're not going to deal with them in this class. You'll be asked in the homework problems sometimes, what is the oblique asymptote? And you'll answer, there is no oblique asymptote. It's one of the choices. Okay, let's find the equation of the ha and find all of that stuff that you see written here, the degrees of the numerator and the denominator. We went over it last week, yes, but we're gonna go over it again. X minus two over X plus five. There's a polynomial on top and there's a polynomial on the bottom. That's the traditional way of looking at rational functions. Polynomials have degrees. The degree is the highest power. OK, the power of the highest power term. So X has degree one, two has degree zero. X has degree one, five has degree zero. Constants have degree zero. So the degree of the entire polynomial here on top is one. We say DEG one. And the degree of the denominator is one. So the degree of the numerator and, and the degree of the denominator are equal to each other. When that happens, let's see, the ha is y equals, you always put the y equals, 1x over 
one X. That is, here you have a one X, here you have a one X, and the X's cancel out. And one over one, these, this is the leading coefficient, the LC from the top, this is the LC from the bottom. Yes. So that happens to be one over one, which is one. So your the equation of the horizontal asymptote is Y equals one. And what that means is this, Here's y equals 1. And you can see, well, you can't see really because the graph doesn't go far enough. But uh, if I were to hazard drawing it, you would see the graph from the bottom getting closer and closer to y equals one on the right. And over here, this graph is going to come down and get closer and closer and closer to y equals one on the left. So it's a tendency. The horizontal asymptote is a tendency. It's just describing the behavior of the graph. When X gets out to negative infinity, oh, <laughs> positive infinity, and negative infinity, the behavior of, of the graph when X gets very large in the positive or negative direction. Now there's more. There's an x-intercept. This graph crosses the, the x-axis somewhere. And there's a y-intercept the graph crosses the y-axis somewhere, probably. There are, well, there are graphs where you don't have a y-intercept or an x-intercept. It's true, you don't have to have them, but most of the time you do. So, four, find the x-intercepts or x-intercept. There's only one here. Here's all you do. You take the numerator, the top, numerator, and you set it equal to zero and solve for X. Now to find the domain, we set the denominator equal to zero. Domain, denominator equal to zero and solve for X. So let's do that. The numerator is the top, x minus 2. x minus 2 equals 0. I subtract, I add 2 to both sides because negative 2 plus positive 2 is 0. 
so that we have x plus zero on the left and zero plus two on the right so that we have x equals two. So now we know where this graph, because it's kind of hard to see, that this graph is crossing at x equals two. And since it's a point, x-intercepts are points, we write it as an x and a y point. x is two, we just found that out. And y is zero. Y is always zero on the x-axis. Now to find the y-intercept, phi, to find the y-intercept. This one is what you always do to find a y-intercept. This is the code that means set all x's equal to zero. Set all x's equal to zero. Okay, so f of zero is going to equal zero minus two over zero plus five. And that will give us negative two over five, which is negative two fifths. And see, this is negative one on the y-axis. This is zero on, on the y-axis. And so this is two-fifths of the way down. So our y-intercept is going to be an x and a y-point. Well, y equals negative two-fifths because it's on the y-axis right here. There's negative two-fifths right there. Let's even write it. Negative two-fifths. So it goes in the y position. And on the y-axis, x is always zero. So I put a zero here and we're done. We're done. We have found the y-intercept, the x-intercept, the horizontal asymptote, the vertical asymptote, and the domain. Do you wonder about the range? I'll tell you, cause you might be asked that at some point in your life. The range is the up and down, remember? The up and down direction. Um, I think it's easy to see that the graph goes up to positive infinity and it goes down to, but doesn't cross probably, uh, we don't know, but we're going to guess, otherwise they would have showed us. Um, and we would have found it. We would have found another Y. Uh, we would have found, well, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. Um, so it's not going to cross Y equals negative, uh, 
y equals 1, it's not going to cross y equals 1. So this part goes from negative 1 with a parenthesis, y not positive 1, y equals positive 1, To infinity, never put a parenthesis around infinity, and here this goes all the way down to negative infinity, and it goes up to but probably doesn't cross y equals 1. So if you're just looking on the vertical axis, which is where the range is, then what you're going to see is that the graph goes all the way down to negative one. Well, it start and the way we write it is it starts at negative one, goes all the way up to but doesn't touch y equals one. This arm goes all the way down to y equals one but doesn't touch it and goes up to positive infinity. So the way we would write the range would be negative infinity up to but not touching positive one, unioned up with the other side of positive one, going all the way up to positive infinity. So negative infinity to positive one, but not touching. And then the other side of positive one going up to positive infinity. You're not asked about that, but I just thought I'd show you. Okay, now let's move on. Unless there are questions about this. You shouldn't be frowning like that. You should be smiling that it's going to be a short test without a whole lot to study for. Is, is there going to be another be practice exam like the last test? Yes, yes, there is. Okay. And I'm hoping we'll have time to go over it a little bit anyway today. Thank it's you. only got 13 problems on it. Okay. 13 is kind of unlucky if you believe in luck. OK. Now we talked about this one last week also. We're going to go through all the stuff we need to go through. And so. I'm going to label these one. Two. Three. Four. And five. And then come down here and actually work them. So one, the domain, let's see, do that. We take the entire denominator, x squared minus 2x minus 15, set it equal to zero and solve for x. So this is probably factorable, so let's do it. All right, negative 15. Well, we know 15 is three times five, and we know five minus three is positive two, so negative three times positive five, not, 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 wrong way, positive three times negative five is negative 15, and positive three plus negative five is negative two. 
So those are the numbers we're going to use. Plus three, minus five. So there we have factored this, and you can always double check yourself. X times X is X squared. X times minus five is minus five X. Plus three times X is plus three X. And then three times, positive three times minus five or negative five is minus or negative 15. So, negative 5x plus 3x is negative 2x, so we factored correctly. Now, I set each factor equal to 0. x plus 3 equals 0. And I subtract 2 from both sides. Minus 3, I mean. I subtract 3 from both sides. So X equals negative three, and that's how you get your sign change. Positive three is in our factor, but when we set X plus three equal to zero, we have to subtract three from both sides. Zero minus three is negative three. So that's what X actually equals in this, in this equation. Now, X minus five equals zero. Add five to both sides. Negative five plus five is zero. So we'll have X plus zero is X equals zero plus five is five. So now these are also the equations of the vertical asymptotes. So before I finish writing the domain, I'm going to come down to va, the vertical asymptotes. These are the equations of the vertical asymptotes. X equals negative three and X equals five. Then I come back up and I work with the domain. This means that negative three will turn this equation, will make this e equation, will make this uh, quadratic trinomial equal zero. I'll get it. And here, five, if we put it in for X, will make this quadratic trinomial equal zero. This is the denominator of the equation, well, of the function. And so we know that X cannot be allowed to equal negative three, and X cannot be allowed to equal positive five, and that would just be the worst thing in the world. So negative one, negative two, negative three, right here. I'm gonna put a little hole there in the x-axis. And over here at positive five. And then I'm gonna try very hard, which is hard for me, to make my vertical asymptotes. And I said this last week, but I'll say it again. Graphing calculators are not, well, that doesn't go out like that. I'm just trying to stay away from making it look like this will cross that. It won't. Not only that, but this is not really vertical. It's really getting closer and closer to the vertical asymptote. And you've got to just take my word for that. And same here, I'm going to try this. Yeah, 
coming down seems to be easier for me than going up. All right, so this is X equals negative three. This is X equals five. But looking at the X axis, if we're writing an interval notation, negative infinity is out here. All of these numbers on the left side of negative three are not going to cause trouble. All of these numbers on the right side of negative three going to the left side of positive five are not going to cause trouble. And all of these numbers to the right of negative, of, of positive five, to the right side of positive five, going all the way to positive infinity, those numbers do not cause trouble. So the way we write this in interval notation, you'll see this. In your answer box. And you'll write negative three comma five or the other way around, doesn't matter. Negative three comma five, or five negative three, no, as long as the numbers are listed there. If you're asked to put this in interval notation, we write our intervals from up here. So I'm going to actually do it like this so I can see them. Negative infinity, to negative three, paren, unioned up with paren, negative three, comma, positive five, paren, unioned up with positive five to positive infinity. And here we're just really just stating what the intervals are that will give us the X's that are okay to use. Okay, number three. Ha, 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 ha. What is the ha? X minus three. This has degree one, this has degree two. So, we're gonna have degree one over degree two. And that means that the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. And that means that the line y equals zero is automatically your horizontal asymptote. Also known as the x-axis. That means as x gets really large in the negative direction, really large in the positive direction, the graph will be getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis. Now this is one of those cases where the graph crosses the x-axis, but it does so in close to the center. And what the HA talks about is what's happening out here 
and what's happening out here. So I said last week that the horizontal asymptote is not as picky as a vertical asymptote. A vertical asymptote is a hardcore stop sign and if a police officer sees you run it, you've had it. But here, as long as you cross the x-axis close to the center of the graph, nothing bad's gonna happen. You just, it's like a four-way stop, right? You just kind of coast on through if nobody's there. Okay, four, x-intercept. You take the numerator and you set it equal to zero and solve for x. X minus three equals zero. I add three to both sides because I need to solve for X. And that will give me X equals positive three. So that means, I mean, it's hard to see up here, but it looks to me like that's po probably positive three. This is where the graph crosses the X axis. So that will be three, zero. So that'll give us the point. Didn't mean to change colors like that, but oh well, three, zero. And you'll see that the instructions say, write the x-intercept as an ordered pair. And that means don't leave it like that, but write it like that. And number five, the y-intercept. For every function you ever encounter, and even for things that aren't functions, what you do is you let all the x's equal zero. Let all x's equal zero. So we are going to have zero minus three over We've got zero squared, minus two times zero, so that's another zero. Zero minus zero, minus 15. So negative three over negative 15 is positive one fifth. So let's see, hard to see, but where this crosses the Y axis is just a little bit above Y equals zero. We can't even see it. It's that close to the X axis, but just a little bit above the X axis. Okay, now, here y is one-fifth. I mean, we're talking about the y-intercept. So there's your point. Because all the x's equal zero, right? 
That's how you found it. All right, let me make this smaller. Do we have any questions about this? Okay, let's move on. But I know you'll think of them. You know how to email me. Here we have another graph. You can tell. Hello? Sorry, I have a question. Sure. Um, are you going to post these notes on Canvas? Yes. OK, sounds good. OK, thank you. You're welcome. All right, now let's do this. Domain. Number one, two, three, four, five. OK, one. Domain. I take the denominator, set it equal to zero and solve for X. So. Negative seven. Well, positive seven. Ah, it's a prime. It only equals 1 times 7. So negative 7 is going to equal negative 1 times 7, and it's also going to equal positive 1 times negative 7. So one of these had better equal negative 6, and it does. It's this one. 1 plus negative 7 equals negative 6. Yay! So I come over here and I factor. OK, so minus 7. And positive 1. Normally I would have written positive 1 and minus 7. Just trying to show you it doesn't matter what order. It does matter what's negative and what's positive. But whether you put the negative seven first or second doesn't matter at all. Because we're going to set both of these equal whoa, to zero. X minus seven equals zero. X plus one equals zero. Subtract seven, uh -uh, add seven, add seven. X equals positive 7. Now subtract 1, subtract 1. Uh, yeah, that's 0. It's really hard to mark through a 1. I guess I could just go like that. Um, X equals negative 1. And now these are going to be the equations of the vertical asymptotes. So these are the vas. And the domain. So that's two. X equals. Ah, Barbara. X equals seven, X equals negative one. Those are the equations of your vertical asymptotes. But up here, the domain, We have to say that X doesn't equal those in one way or another. Or, now I really have to look at the X axis for this. Here's negative one. And that's one of our asymptotes. So let's go ahead and graph it. 
And seven. So X equals negative one and X equals positive seven. And I didn't put my little holes in, but that's okay. Negative infinity is out here. Positive infinity is out here. From negative infinity to the left side of negative one, everything's okay. From the right side of negative one, all the way to the left side of Seven. So, where do I write it? How about here? Negative one to seven. And then every, every number from the right side of seven all the way to infinity, uh, these numbers are okay, just not negative one and seven. So, how I will write those negative infinity to negative one, unioned up with negative one to positive seven, unioned up with positive seven to infinity, but always using parentheses, and parentheses mean, means x doesn't equal, it can just get really close to. which is a limit, by the way. All right, three. Domain, uh, domain vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes. Ha, 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 ha. Okay. Ah, again, look at this. The degree of the numerator is one, the degree of the denominator is two. So the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. So we don't have to calculate anything. That just means that the ha is y equals zero, which is the x-axis. Okay, now we're gonna find the x-intercept and the y-intercept. The x-intercept Uh, X minus one equals zero. So, X equals one, right? I add one to both sides. I'll get X equals positive one. So that'll be the point one, zero. I hear my cats getting into mischief. I don't want to even think about it. The y-intercept. Okay. 
is what you get when you put a zero in for every x. Now, if I put a zero in for every x, I'll have zero minus one. Here I'll have a zero. Here I'll have a zero minus seven. So I'll have my negative one over negative seven. Equals one seventh positive, because the negatives cancel. Boom, boom. And so the y-intercept is going to be 0, 1 seventh. Really, really close. You can't even see it. 1 seventh. We're viewing this from out here. We can't even see it. Okay, I, I want to do all of this for you. I did part of it for you last time. This is, this is an important problem. Again, what you do when there is no X. So the domain, it's not going to affect the domain at all. So one, two, three, four, five. The domain x squared plus 3x minus 4 equals 0. We factor x, x, negative 4, well 4, is 1 times 3, and 2 times 2, 1 times 3, good grief, 1 times 4, 1 times 3 is 3, duh, all right, negative 4, that'll be negative 1, negative 2, or positive 1 times negative 4, positive one, uh, positive two, well, it's the same thing, times negative two. Now, we need to find which ones will add up to positive three, and that's right here. Positive four plus negative one is four minus one, which is three. So I'll put my plus four here and my minus one here. And then I set each one equal to zero. I subtract four from both sides, so I'll get x equals negative four. I add one to both sides, so I'll get x equals one. Those are the equations of the vertical asymptotes. So we could even put two right here, the va, because there they are in all their glory. Meanwhile, back here, I'm gonna erase all this stuff. These are the numbers that need to be taken off the x-axis. So, I didn't do this last time. Negative four and positive one. And that's where the vertical asymptotes will go.
See, I'm not having faith, am I? Let's try that again, do it the right way. But I could always, no, let's just stay in a straight line. There. And the same over here. See, these are a pain to graph. You got to really slow down. Okay. And so the domain will be written. negative four, positive one, or negative infinity to negative four, paren, unioned up with negative four to positive one, paren, one, two, infinity. So there's my domain, and you can see all these numbers to the left of negative four, all the numbers between negative four and positive one, and all the numbers on the other side of positive one going out to infinity. They're not troublemakers. Okay, let's look at our ha. This is where life gets interesting. Our ha. The degree of the top with no x there, the degree of the numerator is zero. The degree of the denominator is two. Well, that doesn't really make life hard, does it? Because, ha, huh? zero is less than two. So the degree of the numerator, even though the degree is zero, it's still less than the degree of the denominator. So, what's our ha? Y equals zero. Now, do we have an x-intercept? You take the numerator, well, look, let me write x-intercept first. I'm getting anxious here. This is what I wanted to show you. You'd have to say seven equals zero, which is nonsense, nonsense stupidity. Is it? There's an S there, isn't there? It's not a C. Nonsense, seven doesn't equal zero because it's not seven X. If it was seven X, you'd divide both sides by seven. You'd have X equals zero. There would be an X intercept. But there is no X there. So yeah, it's nonsense. And that means there is no. There, there, is no x-intercept. There's no law that says there has to be. Okay. 
Okay. Now five. We're going to have a Y intercept. You can see it. It's right there. The Y intercept. You let all the X's equal zero. Well, OK, what does that mean? We're going to have seven because we don't have an X to let equal zero. Over. There's no X there, so I can't put a zero there. Seven times zero would be zero, but it's just seven over zero plus zero minus four. which is going to be seven over negative four, which needs to be rewritten as negative seven over four, because my math lab and most math teachers don't like having a, a negative in the denominator. So our Y intercept will be zero, negative seven fourths. Now let's see if there's one more. There is. I will do these for you. How about ooh, I'll do these for you, but let us move on. Let's take a break, say a 10 minute break, and then move on to. So I'll see you back here. What at 920? Uh, do restart your computer. Save anything you're doing and actually restart, don't stop it, restart it, because that clears out your buffers, your memory, and you're less likely to crash. I'm gonna do that too, after I save this document. 